is going on ladies and gentlemen of YouTube my name is Vinny Vega and today I want to talk about that booty tracers booty that is now I know I'm a little late to the party on this with the whole SJWs getting blizzard to remove a pose that was over sexualized this one in particular that's on screen right now but I mean it's like SJWs think that us male gamers just go on the game we're not there to play the game we're we're there to just simply fap to the female characters I mean just straight pounding it pounding it pounding it so for this first segment let me just tell you a thing or two about SJWs when it comes to SJWs Several bad puns later. And that's what I think about SJWs. Bunch of pansies. I do want to make one honorable mention though. In real life, I do know this girl named Cindy and she's got a booty on her, let me tell you. And I gotta say that between her and Tracer, she definitely wins the booty contest. I mean, just look at it. Look at it. That's an awesome booty right there. All right, now that I got that out of my system, let's talk about this game Overwatch. Now I gotta say, like, I didn't know what I was gonna think about it when I first got into it. One thing's for certain, it's definitely a breath of fresh air, especially considering that it's been a while since the PC gaming community's got a game that's actually very well optimized. More often than not, cross-platform games are pretty buggy on PC and more optimized for console. But this is Blizzard we're talking about, and Blizzard is known for PC gaming in general, like known for World of Warcraft and Hearthstone. It would be expected for them to make this game very well polished for the PC. When it comes to the sheer amount of customization in video settings and control settings, hell, you can even remap the controller to completely whatever you want if you're using a controller. I wouldn't recommend using a controller for FPS if you're on PC, but nonetheless, you can do that. The open beta for Overwatch started on the 5th, and it's going through the 9th, but I believe I, it was extended to the 10th. Not sure when this video is going to post, so it might post when the beta is still going on or right after. It all depends on when I get the video edited together. I really found myself falling in love with this game because of the diversity of the classes and you really do need to coordinate with your team. It will even tell you if you're short on either defense or whatever the case may be while you're picking your characters. Kind of gives people the heads up, like, hey, maybe I should change my class to something else. And you can even change it anytime you want. So if you have to adapt to a certain situation, like there's a bunch of people playing as Bastion, for example, you might have to adapt to that. Unfortunately, me and my friends, we kind of came across five Bastions at the same time when they're on the defense. And that was pretty brutal, to say the least, when you have like five Bastions in turret mode, just kind of like mowing everybody down. We got to the first point, but the second point, we had no chance of getting it. In that regards, I think they should limit it to only two of the same hero. That way, it's a little bit more fair. I think it would be a little bit more balanced that way, so you're not running into five bastions like I did the other night. Overall though, I think all the heroes are very well balanced and it's just a matter of finding a counter to each one when you're when you're playing the game and as you get to know it, you become more well diverse in what you can play as and what you're good at in particular. I hear a lot of people saying, oh my main is this and this is a game where it's not necessarily good to have a specific main so to speak. Unless you comprise a team that has like just like the ultimate group of, you know, this person's good with say Reaper and this person's good with uh, Ryan. Heart. When you have a certain amount of heroes that are well diverse and everyone is very good with that particular hero, that's when you're going to be a lot more competitive compared to everybody else. There's definitely enough diversity to keep things interesting between all the heroes to choose from. Not to mention Blizzard has already announced that they're going to provide free maps and add new heroes and those will be free as well. Overwatch has been in closed beta for quite some time since early last year of 2015. And I didn't get a chance to play it whatsoever until the open beta. But I gotta say that I'm very impressed with this game and I'm definitely going to be buying this game. In fact, on cdkeys.com you can get the Origins Edition for $45. That's a hell of a deal. Blizzard is charging 40 bucks for the regular edition and $60 for the Origins Edition on their website. Now I'm talking about the PC version of course. 
On console, you're still going to be paying $60 for this game up front, and $80 for the Origins Edition. I believe it's $130 for the Collector's Edition, which includes the Soldier 76 statue. Now that depends on you if you want to spend that money on the Collector's Edition. I wouldn't personally, like, I, I don't know, I've just never been into collector's editions, I guess. I'm a bit of a nerd, but it, I guess there's a certain cutoff for me where I want to keep my money, I guess you can say. I think it's still worth checking out, and considering that free DLC comes along with it, that's always a good incentive to get a game. One thing's for certain, there's definitely going to be some Overwatch content coming your way when the game's actually released. Now, does this mean my channel's going to be just strictly Overwatch once the game comes out? Probably not, especially considering that Battlefield 1 might have something to say about that. Let me know what you guys think of the game so far, and are you guys enjoying it as well? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. As always, hope you guys have a badass day today, and I'll see you on the next one.